And hello and welcome everyone to Medieval 2 Total War. So, um, I've been thinking about doing a second Let's Play a while now because, well, the Dwarf Fortress episodes are keep coming and <laughs> it's going pretty fast. And I kind of want to slow it down because um, no one seems to be catching up with it. So, um, my sock, yeah, what else could I Let's Play that takes a really long time? <laughs> it is super difficult. Not really super difficult, but it's 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 quite complex. And I talked about Medieval 2 Total War. So uh, the reason why I'm doing this episode now is because, well, I need to decide on a country to play and if I'm doing a long or a short let's play. So let's have a look. Single player, grand campaign. By the way, um, the whole thinking behind this is the same like in Dwarf Fortress. I don't care if I win. I want an interesting let's play. So, I will not play anything super optimal. I can play everything super optimal. As you can see, I unlocked all the countries. Actually, I'm also thinking about... Oh, I could also play Brittany, or Teutonic, or... I don't know, America. <laughs> no, you know what? I'm just sticking to the main game right now. Just in case you don't even know about Medieval 2. So, um... Should I tell you about Medieval 2? <laughs> I guess, uh, um, what do you say, like, um, yeah, let's, let's, let's explain a bit. So, Medieval 2 is like a medieval game, as the name explains, and it's set in Europe, medieval, at least this uh, game, and yeah, it starts pretty early, like here, in 1080 AD, and it goes quite far into history and they tried to keep it as real as possible. It's in quite an old game but it's a good looking one as you will see. And yeah, so you have um, a campaign with different goals like if I'm playing England here. I will not play England. Like this is out of question because England is like this there's, there's no way you can lose you're on an island. <laughs> but you have to hold forty five regions including Jerusalem. I'm doing the short campaign, it's like a limited faction, France and Sh Scotland, so these guys and these guys. And yeah, this will be a short let's, let's play, this will be like maybe 30 episodes. Actually, it could be quite longer because the game takes a while sometimes. But um, anyway, um, it's unlike other games in this category, like, uh, I don't know, uh, Crusader Kings. Um, you are super focused on a country, like you don't have all the small parts of the county, I and mean, you kind of have it, like you need to mention it, like you can see here, so like these splints, but it's not like going super into detail. It's like more like, oh yeah, I want to build big farming in London, and I want to have a great castle in Cain, that kind of thing. But um, battles are played in a real-time game. So it's it's not like just putting numbers against each other. It's more about uh, trying to win the battle with strategy, which makes this game much more appealing to me than um, all the other grand strategies that are um, showing up everywhere right now. So, and what we need to decide on now is, should we do a short campaign or a long campaign? And which country? So, I will show you all the countries. Uh, there are two countries that I will not let's play, just because, well, of a lack of interesting options, <laughs> so to speak. And England is one of them. Like the problem with England is like you are on an island, so as long as you keep some ships around, no one will ever invade you. Spain might try, Denmark might try, but all in all, well, this should be really easy. <laughs> so I'm not going to play England. Um, but let's have a look at France. As you can see, France is uh, quite a big country in that era. It was always a big country because um, France was always a big military might. Um, they never really got destroyed. The English kind of broke into the knees at some point. And of course, Germany um, occupied it in World War II. But all the other times, um, the French came up. Uh, on the upper hand. 
most of the time that is why a lot of people are of fresh of French descendants and they don't even know about it like um, in medieval times uh, the, Fran uh, the French not even not, not only um, conquered South England they also um, settled in Sicily they influenced Italian politics and was said of course the politics of the Pope and and you know later Napoleon took over the whole world so yeah uh, France is one option let's go to the next the Holy Roman Empire I also want to talk about um, the history of the countries a bit so I need to read stuff myself and I just found out that one of my viewers <laughs> has a major in history so every time I'm telling you bullshit he will just come in kicking me and <laughs> telling me how it really was but yeah Holy Roman Empire so the Germans as you know them today they weren't always the Germans they were the Holy Roman Empire bef before them and they had um, a major mass of land in the middle of Europe um, they were a big trading power um, they also influenced Italian politics and when I'm saying influenced um, politics I'm saying like ev um, almost every emperor at one point went down to Italy to become uh, the emperor and if he didn't broke an army well the Pope would decide on another person <laughs> so yeah um, we will have a lot of wars with them and it will be quite difficult because as you can see we are in the middle and you're surrounded by enemies the, Frank the French doesn't like you the Danish doesn't like you <laughs> um, the Hungarian and the Polish are a bit okay with you but uh, not really and you have the Milanese and we need to I, mean, uh, I need to uh, get used to the English names because in Germany some countries are called uh, like a lot of different. I only played this game in German so far because I really like the translation. But anyway, so um, yeah, Holy Roman Empire. Hold 20 regions, eliminate factions, Milan, Denmark, or hold 45 regions, Rome. And yeah, so just conquer the world and hold Rome. By the way, France. Uh, Jerusalem. So we need to hold Re Jerusalem and hold for the regions or eliminate England. Okay, next one. Spain. Eliminate factions Morse and Portugal or Jerusalem and Granada. So this area. So um, what most people don't know about is that Spain used to be this small and Portugal is this and this, so oh, it was a bit even and everything down here was um, how it occupied no, they, they lived here for a really long time, so the Moors were down here and they they had like the, this whole area under control, that is also why South Spain has big influences on Muslims but anyway uh, we will come to them later, but this year, Spain, and, oh yeah, I haven't talked about the strengths and weaknesses, so, basically, they have fighters, they have um, good uh, riders and fighters, um, these guys have also really good fighters, and later they have also really good shooty guys, like when black powder weapons are starting to become a thing, and, well, you can read it yourself, basically, <laughs> just standing there. And they have conquistadores. So um, once we find America, which will happen at some point, it not, not, uh, it's not that we are finding America, but it gets discovered and then we can start settling in it. And we can have conquistadores and, and try to get America for our own good. The good of our country. Okay, <laughs> next one. Um, one of my favorite factions. Uh, quite tough to play. Vinicius. And Venice is like uh, really rich and kind of just on the east side of Italy. It's of course now um, split into different countries. But um, as you can see, they have quite an interesting starting area. And mostly because um, Italy will be right next to it. And you have like you have this area of the uh, Mediterranean Sea. I need to look up the English words. I don't even know the English words for it. But I will do. I will do if I do a Let's Play. <laughs> Believe me, so I will learn a lot. And <coughs> you have all these rebel areas and, of course, um, Germany in the north. Holy Roman Empire, I'm sorry. Um, 
you have the Hungarians and the Poland and all of them want a piece of you. Also, these guys want a piece of you and I will talk about them later. But um, mostly you have problems with the Holy Roman Empire and with sons in the East. So, yeah, Venice hold 45 regions including Constantinople and Milan and the Byzantine Empire. Oh yeah, oh, um, interesting part about Tunis is that they also get got uh, excommunicated a lot of times, just like the Holy Roman Empire. <laughs> so um, this will be an interesting let's play, just because we constantly need to be aware of what the Pope wants from us, otherwise we will be out. And most of the times you will be conquered, <laughs> because all of uh, West Europe is just uniting together against you and oh, that can turn out to be a bit difficult. Okay, let's have a look at the next faction, Sicily. Of course, Sicily has the south side of Italy and Sicily itself. They are the descendants of the Vikings, the Normans, the Northmans, also known as the French at this time. But, um, yeah. Um, Sicily is really interesting because, well, you are doing a lot of stuff with ships, so the Mediterranean Sea is yours for to take. Um, they kind of, uh, they are kind of lacking really interesting units. Uh, most of them are just guys with spears, and yeah, as you can see, they have Norman knights, so they have some riders, but well, not that interesting actually, uh, just because of the units. But uh, the political area is quite alright. Let's have a look at the next one um, the Milanese. So, Milan, Familia Ducale. And it's a bit <laughs> the same like uh, Venice, but you are more on the west side and. At the beginning, you, you are not under pressure because Germany is alright with you, Italy is alright with you, the French are not really alright with you, but uh, it kind of works out for you. And the problem is that your main adversary is Venice, and Venice has a lot better military. So, this is the Milanese. Um, hold 45 regions, including Constantinople. So, this area here. And. The Holy Roman Empire and village. Of course. Because why not? <laughs> Scott, wow. So, this is the second faction I will not play just because. Well, they have interesting units. Maybe I will make a short let's play at some point, but I will prefer doing this on a Teutonic campaign. Same as England, by the way. Uh, if I will play England or Scotland, I will do it on the Teutonic, uh, what I'm talking about, the Britain campaign. I like that would be more interesting. Well, let's just show you here. Yeah, eliminate factions England or Jerusalem and 45 other regions. The Scottish have quite interesting history, but I'm not kind of in the mood right now. Bam! Byzantine Empire! And these guys are really interesting because, as you can see, this is modern Turkey. This is also the reason the, the Turks are carrying the moon in their banner because it was the banner of the city of Constantinople and yeah they are like the big boys <laughs> between the Black Sea and the Mediterranean Sea and they are the rest of the holy of the East Holy German em German <laughs> of the East Roman Empire and you are constantly at war <laughs> because everybody wants a piece of you like uh, in the East you have the Muslims in the West you have the Pope and the Pope really it really, really doesn't like you. And at some point, it can even happen that the Pope will start a crusade on you, uh, despite the fact that you are actually kind of also Catholic. Not Catholic, but uh, Christian. <laughs> so, yeah, um, Byzantine is get always getting interesting. Um, weakness is Lex late period gunpowder because they didn't exist in the late area. And they have good uh, heavy cavalry units, lesser cavalry, capital archers, and the Varangian Guard. Oh, as I said, they are really uh, interesting to play. Campaign rules, short, eliminate factions in each and the Turks, or long, Rome region and Jerusalem region. The Byzantine Empire. Russia. Well, Russians are Russians, I guess. <laughs> they always were. But as you can see, um, the Empire of the Rus, also Viking group, by the way. 
Um, it's quite small at the beginning, and you kind of can go in all directions at the beginning, which is quite interesting. Uh, later you will run into a lot of problems with the Mongols, which will appear at some point. But at the beginning they are quite easy to play. Um, they don't have a lot of heavy units, like most of your guys will be riders or like the infantry with spears and axes. Oh, quite alright. I don't even think that I played Russia ever. But yeah, this is Russia. And hold the Constantinople region, Jerusalem. And eliminate Poland and Hungary. Okay, next one. Also, super interesting the Moors. So, um, as you can see, you can have camel gunners. All is said about the Moors. Next, no, no. <laughs> yeah, you can have camel gunners actually. Um, they're not really good in the late period because, well, they didn't exist in the late period, but uh, you can kind of start your own big state by taking all of Africa and taking over Egypt and eliminating Spain from the west. So you can uh, make the street of Gibraltar closed for anyone to pass so you can control all the trading that is coming from like England to Jerusalem, which makes it really interesting. And well, they are Muslim faction, so I don't need to care about the Pope at all. Um, if someone is um, talking about um, a holy war against the Christians, I don't really have to attend. Like, if I'm not following the Pope, uh, I run into problems. But if I don't follow the war against the Christians, uh, it's, it's, it's alright. <laughs> the Jihad isn't like uh, that st um, strong. I don't even know how to say it. <laughs> like, but but, but uh, like the, the, the Pope can say, okay, um, all Christian nations are now attacking Egypt and take, uh, I don't know, the Alexandria area. And everybody has to put up an army, put them in ships and bring them down. And if you are the guy that manages to get it, um, you will be rewarded like a lot of money. And if you don't, well, have fun with the excommunication. <laughs> it's it's not that hard on the jihad. The jihad is just saying like, oh yeah, we are declaring war on this in this country and try to take as much as possible. And the better you are, the more the other Muslim factions will like you. It's a general gist. Okay. Um, eliminate factions Spain and Portugal, of course, and Jerusalem region and Toledo region. And next area, the Turks. So, okay, you know about the Turks, they so kind of conquered this whole area, uh, plus this area. And, well, they are, they are, they are a nice faction, they have really unique units. Um, they have the Yanizars, they are really good with gunpowder later, and they have the biggest cannons. Because as you know, the Turks managed to go all the way to the west, like up to here. Um, kind of the later Austrian Empire region well, and they did it mostly with gunpowder and cannons which makes them interesting it's of course a Muslim faction um, really relying on um, good melee units at the beginning they aren't really into horses which is interesting I think I need to look this up I think I can tell you a lot more about the Turks and the Moors just because I have a lot of Turkish friends but yeah anyway Turks. Hold 45 regions, Constantinople, Jerusalem, and destroy the Byzantine Empire. Alright. No, wait a second. They didn't took the moon. The moon was there before. I think they took the red. I need to read it. Like, this, is, this will be really interesting for me, too, because I need to read a lot of stuff. Yay! <laughs> anyway, next faction Egypt. Um, Egypt is really easy to play because, well, as you can see, you are. Kind of, there's nothing. <laughs> like, most of this is desert to the west, and the Moors really won't reach you. You have the Turks in the north, which is which are really tough enemies, and you are under constant threat. Oh yeah, also same goes for the, Tur um, the Turks. You are under constant st the threat of being attacked by Christian empires. But all in all, well, it's uh, quite an easy faction. Um, you are relying a lot on cavalry. And you're not really good in the end because you don't have any, like really any um, heavy infantry, like you don't have the ironclad 
um, fighters to back you up, but um, it's it's more like hit and run tactics all the time with the Mamluks. Yeah, not really interesting, but all right because well, it's easy to start with and it's easy to win and they have a lot of history. So yeah, Egypt. Uh, short version, Mars and the Turks. A long version, Jerusalem. Constantinople, 45 regions. The Danish. A country that is back to its status, you know. <laughs> because the, the Danish state looks like this right now. But they were everywhere, of course, because they invaded England. They settled here and they settled up here and went all the way around and settled in Sicily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these are the OG, the original Vikings. No, wait, original Vikings, so is they more like OV? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, these are the Vikings. Vikings, Berserkers. And their strengths, of course, Norse X Men. So they are running along with, uh, <laughs> around a lot with X's. They don't really uh, have good cavalry. Because the Norsemen never really forked on horses. Well, because they never really find out how to do it. <laughs> of course, their um, um, what do you call descendants, maybe? So the English and the French were really good with horses, but they, well, really not. But these guys with the long axes are like constant threat to horse chargers. So, yeah. They are, good. they are a really nice faction because they have a lot of history that is kind of untapped in their general knowledge of history. And yeah, Northman, Danish, and hold 45 regions including Jerusalem or eliminate factions, the Holy Roman Empire. Also, they were constantly at war with these guys. Anyway, next country, Portugal, same as Spain. Like literally. <laughs> Same as Spain, and they have a, a, a lot of different unit mix, and they have kind of. Um, they, they are more relying on. Um, how, can, how can I even put it? It's, it's, it's not, it's, it's not, li not even uh, distance fighting. It's more like hit and run distance fighting with a mix of spear walls and. Yeah. They, they, they are not really fun to play at the beginning, they are getting more interesting later because then you can have like the Spanish square. Which is interesting because I'm playing Portugal, but <laughs> they are a bit hard to explain because it's Portugal and Portugal's um, history is super convoluted, but which could make it more interesting, I guess. Um, campaign rules eliminate factions, Spain and Moors, and hold. Uh, Jerusalem region Granada. So, same as Spain. Poland. Well, I guess you know all about Poland. Because who doesn't? <laughs> For real, though. Um, Poland is, is a um, nice faction. Because, well, Poland, does the Polish Empire uh, rise and fall a lot of times. Like, they got constantly conquered and they conquered other regions. So, uh, they are, they are weird, but they are also interesting to play. Uh, the infantry is uh, like the knights aren't really that great, and they have a lot of militia running around <laughs> with just battle axes and really bad armor. But they have um, one of the best cavalry units you can get. And you can also get Hussars, and you have to hold Jerusalem and. Russia and Hungary eliminated, uh, which should be quite easy, I guess. Hungary is uh, a bit on the difficult side, but yeah. Also, as I said, really interesting history. I will not read you this to you. I will do it if you decide on these guys, but I don't think the Polish really have a chance. Because <laughs> no one is really interested in Poland, I guess, for some reason. Anyway, Hungary, same as Poland. No, like uh, literally, they have kind of the same units. They have these battlefield assassins, which are 
quite bullshit, I guess, on a single player because the, the, the thing is like they they are invisible on the campaign map and they are invisible on the battlefield until you start attacking with them. So they are really good for flanks, but all in all, uh, not really, not really a faction I would like to play. Uh, they are an interesting faction, of course, because well, they of, of course um, later bundled up with Austria and they held held a big territory and made the Germans starting to build more castles because they were under constant threat of Hungarian raids. They just sat on their horses. They were really known for for um, archers sitting on horseback and shooting people left and right. And the area where I'm living in, um, we still have like uh, fortifications built in medieval ages uh, because um, almost every small village in town had one. So um, and what they did when the Hungarian appeared, they just ran in and <laughs> were hiding behind the walls. Because they couldn't, even, they couldn't even start defending their own villages because they were the Hungarians were just riding through and shooting everybody with their bows, and they never expected this kind of fighting. It was not really a battlefield tactic. It was more run and gun, and it worked out pretty well for them. But yeah, Hungary, eliminate factions, Holy Roman Empire, Poland, or Old Jerusalem. I don't even know if it's this counts as a Christian area. I think it's orthodox, but we will find out if we play them, or if we beat them, which is much more likely, because I don't think anybody will settle for Hungary. So, um, what I want you to do is just tell me in the comments uh, what country you would like to see, and I wish you a Merry Christmas. Um, I think it's the first day of Christmas today. Did I upload this? Yeah, it should be the first day of Christmas, and just tell me what you want. So, I'm Bauta from Dorf Elfisch Diplomacy, and I'm out of here, so to speak. Yeah, this will be fun. I hope. I really hope. <laughs> anyway, just tell me in the comments what you want to see, what you would like to see, if you want a long campaign or a short campaign. And then I will embellish you with history. <laughs> see ya.